Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm excited today to bring you another video in the Proxmox series. Today I'm going to cover how to launch an LXC or a Linux container on the Proxmox virtual environment system. You can see here I'm running virtual environment 8.3.5. This is the latest version of Proxmox. And today I'm just going to go over containers and creating containers uh, and basically what we can do with them and why they're, in my opinion, superior to virtual machines. So let's jump right in. There are a variety of ways to make containers. So I'm going to show you the Proxmox only way first, and then we're going to jump into another way called the helper scripts method. So we're going to start here and looking at what templates we even have available. So I go to my local section right now, and this is the container templates section that I've already highlighted. You can see here I've got three container templates to choose from, but maybe you don't want to use Debian or Ubuntu. We want to have the option to do either upload container templates or download from URL, but the most straightforward way is just use this templates button here. So when I click templates here, these are the built-in ones that I can use. So for example, this is a lot of, this listing is mainly a lot of turnkey. So when I scroll down here, you'll see a lot of turnkey Linux. And in case you don't know what that is, uh, turnkey is basically a group of people that make these really cool pre-configured things. And they have all these options. They have Nextcloud here, Postgres, uh, all, all these things, own cloud. So if you wanted to, for example, install own cloud, you wouldn't have to install a container first and then use all the own cloud instructions to download that. You you can just download this container and it's already built in. Own cloud is already built in. So if you look at all the true, true turnkey stuff here, I would search here for something you're looking for. Uh, for example, OpenVPN is in here. Let's just search here, for example, WireGuard. I bet you I'll find one. There it is, turnkey WireGuards. If I wanted to run a WireGuard container, this is already loaded. But let's say I want to do something a little bit more generic. I just want to launch a basic Ubuntu container. I had the option of searching all of these. And you can see before I had Ubuntu 2204 and 2404, but I didn't have 2410. So let's go ahead and download that. And this is going to now pull this template so I can see it on my template list. And you'll see here it's downloaded, it's doing the checksum, and it's task OK. So we are done. So that's how to add a template really fast. And if you're interested in the turnkey things, I recommend you take a look at those. And I X that on here, we'll see our new template is added. So let's go ahead and create a container from this template. I'm going to go ahead and click Create Container up here in this blue button in the top right. When I do that, the first thing it's going to do is ask me for my password. But really, I'm going to choose a host name first. So I'm just going to call this Ubuntu-Noble. Again, all lowercase, no spaces. Keep your special characters to a minimum. Uh, I'm going to choose a password. Mine's going to be insecure, but you guys can choose a secure one, and they're going to make you pick one. And now my next um, option here is to choose whether this is going to be a privileged or an unprivileged container. Now, no matter what I say, I'm about to ignite a firestorm, because if you are not you know, familiar with the Proxmox world, there's a large fight over when print containers should be privileged versus unprivileged. And I'm going to give you the very simple way that I go about it. Uh, I used pr unprivileged containers uh, when I just want to do very simple things that don't involve uh, mapping a user, mapping drives, or using USB pass-through. So that's a great, those are three things, running as root on the host, mapping drives in with permissions, and USB pass-through. Uh, those work really well when it comes to privileged containers. Uh, but there's a warning with that. Again, because the container is privileged, it has the ability to run as root on the host. So if your container were to be compromised, somebody could technically go through there. And because it has the ability to run as root, be able to go into your greater network. With an unprivileged container, that's not possible because that container cannot run as root on the host. So no one will ever be able to get root access to your Proxmox or really anything on your network in the event that a unprivileged container was compromised. But the problem with unprivileged containers is, again, if I want to use things like USB pass-through, it's very complicated with an unprivileged container. Anything when it comes to mapping drives with permissions, like for example, if I want to run map a drive from my TrueNAS scale instance into an unprivileged container and then have it run as a certain user, that's a huge pain because an unprivileged container will change the way that the users are run by mapping them differently outside the container versus inside the container. And that's complicated and hard. And of course, if I need to run as root for any reason for any container, that's not going to be possible with an unprivileged privileged container because it, do it doesn't want to let you run as root. That's the idea. So I'm going to leave this as unprivileged for now. But if you want to do any one of those three things, I recommend you uncheck this box. And if you uncheck this box, in fact, I'm actually going to run this as privileged just to show you because there's something special you have to do to get this running uh, as a privileged container. So I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now it's going to ask me for the template. And again, this is where I just added my new Ubuntu template here. It is 24.10. But if you want to see more here, go back to your local Proxmox and then download or add more templates. So I'm going to do 24.10. I'm going to click Next. Uh, in this case, it's going to ask me how, how big of a disk I want, whether I want to add more disks. I'm just going to leave this as 8 gigs, but you can change how many, what size you want it here. And then, of course, you can change where that disk lives. In my case, I only have one place for it to live, but this is where you would change that if you have many drives mapped in here. 
So I'm going to come over here to next. Uh, how many cores I want? Uh, I want just one. And again, you're seeing so the advanced. I'm going to uncheck this right here. This is just the simpler view. I only want to run on one core, but I can give it up to four cores because that's what I have. Uh, how much memory I want? Again, I can give it more if I want to. No big deal. Click next. I want to make a change here. Um, I want to make this and I want to give it a, a, a DHCP IPv4, mainly because I don't know what I have open right now in my ranges and I don't necessarily need to give this a static. But in the event you know, hey, I know my, I have an internal naming scheme and set naming scheme that I do for all of my containers and all my virtual machines so I know everything's on a certain network. You can go ahead and set that here and set your gateway if you want. I'm just going to let it go DHCP because this is just a test. I'm going to click next. And DNS, I'm going to let it use host settings and then confirm. Uh, it's going to create it with these settings right here. I'm just going to click finish. So here we go. So it's now creating my container. And you can see what it's doing. It's creating the SSH key. And now it says task OK, which means we are good. OK, so now we need to make one change to this. So now our container was Ubuntu Noble. It was 110. OK, and we're going to have to go down here to options. And here's why we have to do this. You'll see here it says features none. Now, if you notice before, when I unchecked privileged, uh, unprivileged container, uh, it said the nesting feature was checked. When I come in here, you'll see nesting is not checked. I have to check this. Otherwise, this container won't start. I'll show you what it's going to look like uh, in the event I try to start this. So now I'm going to start this container. And you're going to see it says connected, but the screen is just black. I can't type or do anything. This container just looks dead. It looks broken. But it says here it's running. You can see a little green arrow. It looks like it's doing its thing. You can see here we have some CPU, some memory usage, some uh, boot to size. I mean, we, we have what looks like usage, but you go into the console and nothing happens. Let's shut this down because uh, this is clearly not working. The problem is the nesting feature. So let's go back to options and let's come over here and let's turn on nesting. And you're going to see now this container is going to start up correctly this time. So I'm going to click start. And now we have the option to log in. So my login is always going to be root. And then my password is going to be the one that I chose. So here we go. We're on Ubuntu Noble. Uh, so in this case, we can run an apps update if we want. And you guys will see this should be pretty up to date. No, we're not. We're at a little lot. So now we can do an apps upgrade dash Y. And this is what I recommend you do um, because Again, if you're out of date like this, there, you just want to make sure we're running all the latest stuff. And even with just 512 megabytes of memory and one core, you can see this is moving pretty quickly. So let's go back to our summary tab over here. Let's take a look at how this is running. So it's almost maxing out the CPU, but it's barely even touching the memory. 87 megabytes, absolutely tiny. So it's doing its CPU usage here, but it's barely even touching the memory. But it's, it's doing its thing. So now we're good. We're upgraded in here and everything is running. The one thing is it doesn't have a lot of tools. For example, this is a bare metal install. So wget is not here. Um, curl should not be here. So basic stuff like this aren't installed. So just know that just because this is here doesn't mean we've got uh, a fully functional system yet. If you want to do just basic things, I don't even think na is nano here. Nano might not even be here. Nano is here, uh, but other tools just are not so um, just be aware of that like you're gonna have to install just a few things but that's how quickly we can get a container up and running but there's not that's not the only way we can do it just by the manual creation in fact there are a lot of other options and I'm going to show you those now one of my favorite things to do is use the Proxmox VE helper scripts, and you'll find them here at community-scripts.github.io. I'm going to put this link in the video description, but when I'm going to, this is the screen you're going to see when you go there. I'm just going to click View Scripts, and this is going to show you there's a lot of stuff here. First off, notice 13,000 stars on GitHub, but these are organized by what you're looking for. So for example, the R suite. In this case, let's come all the way down here and look at Radar. This is a Radar LXC. So this is going to show you it's going to run on 7878. It's going to use two virtual CPUs, one gig of memory and four gigabyte of hard drive space. Um, there's some really cool stuff here. So this tells you what radar is. It's upgradable. And this is the script you run in order to, uh, the command you run in order to download it. So I'm going to show you that right now. Let's install a version of radar. And this is going to run on Debian 12. Um, there's a few here. So here is it. There's a few other options to look at the source code if you want to look at the source code. But I'm just going to go ahead and copy this straight out. I'm going to copy this command. And I'm going to come back over to my Proxmox. I'm going to go to, well, first off, I'm going to shut this down. And now I'm going to come over to my Proxmox. And then I'm going to click Shell. And I'm just going to paste that by holding Shift and Insert. And you can see this is the line that I just copied, bash curl from where it is. This is the script. And this is Radar. So I'm just going to hit Enter, just like that. And it's going to say, do you want to create a new Radar LXC? Yes, I do. I'm going to use all defaults. But if you guys want to, you can come in here with advanced settings. But I'm not going to need to do that. I'm just going to keep it default for right now. And this is what it's going to set up, Debian 12 unprivileged container, 
four gigabytes of disk size, two CPU cores, a gig of memory, and it's gonna give it the container ID of 112. So here's some 112 right now. You can see it's starting to spin up. The one thing I wanna tell you is do not click away from the shell. Leave the shell up and running. If I click another one of these tabs, it could break the install. So don't click away from this. Just let it do what it's gonna do. And it's gonna tell you everything right here. So I'm gonna let this run. And we're gonna jump back in uh, the next time the script prompts me. Okay, my script is done. And we'll see here what it did. Uh, it didn't get any IPv6 out, which is fine. We just stuck with IPv4. Uh, this is going to be the network it's connected to. So it's on my 1099 network, as like usual, but it gave it the address of 180. It did all these things, and it says radar has successfully been set up. Access it using the following URL, and it gives me the URL. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this URL right here. I'm going to right-click that, and I'm going to open this link in a new tab. And here's radar, just like that. Notice I didn't do any Docker Compose, anything like that. This is basically running on bare metal, uh, as far as I know. So I can have a username here um, and a password. that and we're in radar now of course this isn't working it's not connected to anything but i mean this is this is radar so if i can do this with all of mine i can come back in here to the r suite and do every single one of these and have a full r suite up and running in individual lxc's i don't recommend that but i just wanted to show you guys an example uh, a more effective way to show this would be something that's very hard to set up for example um, a lot of people for example struggle with nextcloud so here's the nextcloud vm and the nextcloud pi so let's go over to nextcloud nextcloud pi um so we have the option here. This is a great example too. So here's the default image and here's the Alpine Linux. When I'm given the option, I always choose the Alpine Linux because they run on lighter, um, it has lighter needs. So look over here, for example, the default uses two virtual CPUs, two gigabytes of memory and eight gigabytes of hard drive space. But the Alpine image, image only uses a gig of memory and two gigabytes of hard drive space. So the Alpine images are generally lighter and run with less resources. Let's look at the VM. The VM here runs at a little bit different, two virtual CPUs, two gigs of memory, 12 gigabytes of hard drive space on Debian 12. So it's it's a little bit more, and you can see here there's extra, obviously extra installation steps. It's a little more complicated to do VMs and they take up more space, which is why I'm such a huge fan of containers, man. I love, I love containers. And there's a lot of options here for containers. Let's click out of this, come back over here. This is done, this is up and running. You'll see here too, let's come to my summary. Uh, we have these cool little tags here, uh, and these tags represent um, the automatically added tags we get from running the helper script. So when we come over here on the notes, there we go. You'll see here that um, you have these really cool notes sections for bias of coffee and we have the R tag and the community script tag automatically added. So this is pretty cool and you can see it's barely taking up any space right now. Radar is running on 211 megabytes of memory um, and it's taking up only less than a gig of hard drive space. So super, super light way to run this. Um, and, I, and I like it a lot. But this has just been a quick overview on containers. There's a lot of other cool things we can do with them. But I just wanted to show you guys in the event that you're new to Proxmox, how to get this up and running quickly, how to do a variety of containers and how to come over here to community scripts to find just an absolute ton of stuff. I, I mean, there's so many containers here, guys. I recommend you come and look at this and look at some of these cool things that are here. Firefly, huge common container, actual, very common. Like there's all kinds of cool stuff. The media streaming stuff is here, documentation and notes. There is, look at all these things. This is amazing. Wiki.js, which is what my wiki is running on. Really just cool stuff. So I recommend you guys come over here and poke around a little bit. On the wiki, uh, if you come over to Proxmox over here, I've pulled out just a few of the scripts that I find uh, are necessary. So when we come over here to the scripts to make it easier. This is gonna show you where the repository is. This is helper scripts. Um, and this is a couple of scripts that I've, I've, I've installed here. So the, the, uh, the post install script I recommend you use if you're just setting up Proxmox for the first time, uh, getting rid of old kernels. And here's the cron LXC updater. So if you're running um, LXCs, this will update them automatically, like I think every Sunday night. Here's some Docker LXCs. For example, the Docker one is the most common one that I use. Uh, so the Docker LXC is basically just set you up with a brand new LXC that's just running Docker. So you, it's, it's a blank slate. You can install any containers you want, but it's already got Docker pre-installed for you. And you can see that over here when I search the scripts for Docker. This is the Docker LXC. Again, um, and I use the Alpine Linux, so this would be the command I would use. And the Alpine Linux uses nothing. One CPU, one gigabyte of RAM, two gigabytes of hard drive space. Uh, and you could always change that later. I want you guys to know that I can come back in here, say for example, Radar didn't have enough. I can go to resources here and add anything I want. I could add more memory by going to edit and changing these numbers. I can come over here to my swap space and add more swap space. I could add more CPU cores if I want, and I can add more hard drive space. Now just notice, if I wanna add hard drive space, I wouldn't edit this because it's just gonna say, 
where the hard drive is. I want to come over here and I want to do a volume action and then resize. It's going to ask me what size increment I want to use. So right now it's four gigabytes. So if I say, hey, I want a 10 gigabyte hard drive, I wouldn't type 10 in here. 10 tells me how much more I'm adding. So if I want to make it 10, I have to add six. And when I click resize disk and notice I can do this when it's running, it's going to resize the disk instantaneously. When I come back up here, you'll now see the size equals 10 gigs. I did not have to restart the container for this to happen. In fact, inside the container, it's now going to recognize. You'll see that here. The available is now 8.4 gigs. So that was a really fast way to just resize uh, this hard drive in real time without having to do any type of restarting or anything like that. So this is just a really cool way to edit it. And this is a really good example in the event that, for example, you set this up uh, with all the default uh, settings without going into advanced and you want to say, hey, actually, I need more space. I'm running out of space or I need more memory or whatever it is. Uh, you can come back here and handle that. So again, I hope you guys like this video. Um, I Please like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions you want to talk about this, please leave a comment below in the comment uh, section. And if you really want to ask technical questions, please go on Discord and post a question in the support forum. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. And if you'd like to support me even more, please buy me a coffee.